Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of 12 Months of Christmas. I'm pretty excited about today's because if you've been in any crafting community lately, you know that the tin cans are, as my little girls would say, bananas. So I decided to go ahead and do Christmas cans for you guys. All right, first thing we gotta do is get our can flattened out. So I'm taking the hammer and just flattening the bottom and then flipping it over to flatten the bottom again just to make sure it stays straight. Then it needs a good coat of flat spray paint. You don't have to do this step, but this just allows my paint, um, I think I end up using all three brands of paint on each can, but it just gives it a good surface to stick to. So then I want to use the JRV Santa Postcards paper. Now listen, if you think you might want to use this, I highly recommend going ahead and getting some because this was a limited edition and once it's gone, it's gone. It's sold out with Jamie Ray and what I have in stock is all I can get. So I'm tearing out the portion that I want to use and I'm going to give the can a little coat of, I believe it's Chateau, the color that I used and I'm only doing just a small little portion. I just want to cover that underneath the portion of the paper because that's going to make the paper pop a little bit more. If I were to leave it black or I, th this can is going to end up being painted green. But if I were to paint it that darker color, it's going to make the paper a little bit darker. And it's going to give it a little bit, it's just not going to be as bright. So I want to make sure that it's bright underneath there. Okay, I want a little bit of texture on this one. So I used half a scoop of the Dixie Belle Sea Spray. Mix that in with some DIY paint and marquee. And I'm going all over just randomly dabbing it. And I'm creating some peaks with this paint. And that just creates some fun texture and a little bit of crustiness, if you will. So I am going over the red now with DIY paint in Monet's Garden. And I'm going to end up distressing that back so that you can see that red underneath. I'm using a baby wipe for wet distressing and you can use any type of damp cloth is fine. I'm actually getting a little bit of sudsing here which I did not love so but it was just what I had handy so then I'm wiping back the excess with a dry paper towel so I would probably recommend just a damp towel over the baby wipe. Okay, so I found this board in my stash. So unfortunately, I cannot tell you what stain color this is, but this is just a one by 12 piece of pine and 24 inches long. So I am pre-drilling a hole in the back of the can and I just screwed it into the board. Okay, so I am not exactly sure which of these birds I want to use yet. So I went ahead and just took my air dry clay and filled in every single one of them. Because if you're not aware of this, you can actually save your pre-made castings. So you can pop those in the freezer and just a Tupperware bowl and save them for later until you're ready to use them. So if you've got a big project coming up that you know you're going to want a lot of design for, you can make several at a time and just freeze them. Alright, I've laid out my birds to kind of get a visual of what I think I want the finished project to look like. And I'm going back and adding the tight Von Quick and Thick to the back and placing them back down. I'm giving this a good coat of Dixie Belle's Dried Sage. And this is going to just be the base because we're going to do some really cool effects with this one but it just needs a base coat to start with so this color is perfect and this i'm just imagining this on a piece of furniture this color is beautiful so next up is 
the Iron Orchid Designs typesetting stamp and I'm just going to spell out joy and I'm laying it out here on my tissue paper because that's what I'm actually going to stamp it on. I love these thin mounts. We actually do have these on the website at wreathandruby.com so you can cut these up and use them in various sizes. So okay one more tip I need you guys to know. We sell empty ink bottles. A lot of people don't realize that you can actually mix the IOD inks. My stamp pad had the color new grass, but it's just a little bit too bright. So I mixed some china blue and turmeric about 50-50 to get a darker green. So I decided I liked it best down in the bottom right hand corner. So that's where I'm going to apply my little piece of tissue paper. And I'm using the same brush that still had a little bit of paint in it and I'm using the Fusion Mineral Paint Top Coat as my decoupage medium. I really love DIY's uh, liquid patina, but I didn't have any open. I had this open and I need to use it up, so I'm gonna use it. And so you can see here that I've got a little bit of a paint on top and I'm just blotting it off with my paper towel. All right, now I'm gonna break out some of the Fusion Metallics. And this one is bronze. And I am going to go over this. Um, a little heavier in some areas, a little lighter in others, but I'm really getting into the detail of the birds. Now it's time for the really cool part. I'm taking some D Dixie Belle patina paint and going over just a few little spots here and there no rhyme or reason just totally random blotting down some of this iron color paint and spritzing it with the patina spray and we're gonna watch and see what happens all right you guys do you see that rust that is so cool so i'm taking some black wax and going over the little birds and I'm really going around the edge too because I want these little guys to pop off the can. So by going around the edge, it's really defining them. And then I'm wiping back the excess. So that way the black wax has settled into the details. And then I'm rubbing back to have that bronze come back through on top. And I don't know, you just really have to see it here in just a second to really see the definition that this, this process gives. Okay, for this next can, I want to use a portion of the Woodland transfer from Christmas uh, 2020. So, I'm really sorry that you cannot get this transfer anymore, but I'm going to use this little wreath out of it, okay? So, don't be mad at me. I really wish that I could order more for you, but it's discontinued. Okay, so I'm doing the same technique here with the farmhand stamp and just stamping onto my tissue paper because I thought this one would be fun to make it personalized and put a little H on it. Okay, so this is where I get to be honest with you and tell you that I did not love the white tissue paper on the red paint. So I'm gonna show you here in just a second how I'm going to kind of mask it a little bit, but you can see here why I don't love it. You can see the outline of the paper. I'm taking just a plastic grocery bag here over my finger to rub the 
paper into the little ridges just to make sure everything is really nice and adhered. I don't want any, you know, pieces of the paper popping up. So this is how I'm kind of masking that outline of the paper. I ended up cutting the wreath into four pieces and piecing it back together, kind of over, overlapping it just a little bit more in order to make it a smidge smaller and cover just the outline a little bit better. All right, I'm adding a little bit of dark wax. All, actually, I think it's black. It's black wax all the way around and a little bit of gold wax just to give it a little shimmer on top. All right, I'm gonna add some of my rusty wire to this one. And since this can is larger, I doubled up the rusty wire. And you can see in my previous video, I go in a little bit more in depth on exactly how I did this. So I'll be sure to link that below so that way you can watch that video to get a little bit more in depth tutorial. But here's the finished project, what do you think? All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you were inspired to make some tin cans. Now, listen, I know that everybody's not gonna be making Christmas right now. So my goal is for you to save this video into a playlist for yourself. That way, come, you know, late fall, whenever you have a collection of videos, I'm sorry that I talk with my hands. I don't know why I do that. You could tie it behind my back and I probably wouldn't be able to speak. Anyways, um, Go ahead and save the video so that way when you are ready for Christmas projects, you've got access to the videos. You remember where they're at. So let me know in the comments below, what do you think about these projects today? Do you love them? Are you tired of seeing them yet? I hope not, because I like them. And I think that you're gonna keep seeing them for just a little while longer. So if you haven't done one yet, because you think, oh, this is a quick fad, it's gonna be over in a minute by the time I gather my supplies. I don't think so. So go ahead and get you some supplies save your cans and go ahead and use the same technique to make your spring or summer decor. And just remember that we are doing this all year long. On the 25th of every month, you get a bonus video and I will see you Monday.